Alvarez's Twitter is at Brian Alvarez. He'll be back tomorrow. He doesn't do this because he doesn't believe in ASMR kids. Did you like that? Yeah. Did you hear yesterday's show? Brian doesn't have the network anymore. I don't have the network anymore. Do you? Probably not. I found out I lost it on Saturday when it was time for my month to re-up because I thought, like everybody else, hey, they said it's going to go till April 6th or 4th or whatever it is. Nope. Went to get my Tully Blanchard on. Went to it. Couldn't do it. That sucked. Told me to go to Peacock to watch it. Went to it. Couldn't. Knew that was going to happen. That sucked. And it was inevitable. And do you remember when they marketed that thing on being like a generational bonding tool? Like the past, present, future deal? Like Hogan to Rock to Cena, Flair to Austin to Randy Orton, all that stuff on and on. And Dom was making fun of me before the show about bitter old man Semp. And I'm going to try not to do that, although I know that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. I know it. It's going to be like when I'm sitting out there in the lawn chair on the front lawn and I got a a cold beer and a 22-ounce bottle in a brown bag and some smoke because that's just what it is. And I'm just yelling at kids as they go by, you know, tossing a football up in the air and I'm yelling at like, what do you know about Ron Simmons? Like, you know, just, just, I know that's how it's going to sound, even though I don't mean it to here, but I got, there's two things that I just need to, to lament and whine about. One of which is I've been through this before, like a decade ago, I got an Apple TV and it was the, the dirt worst one. It was the second generation version. It just adult film star levels of sucking on this thing. It was awful. I'm going to try to use a specific example, except uh, to be honest, uh, my, my knowledge of porn kind of is like music and pro wrestling. It kind of peaks in the late 80s, early 90s. So I'll save you the Heather Hunter reference. Is there anybody? Mia Malkova level. Thank you. Is there anybody else out there? Anybody can name in the Twitch chat? Well, the, the homies here. Ava Devine of Apple TVs. I'm gonna, I gotta stop now. It's producer Dom is just in my ear sweating bullets. It's a, uh, Bottom line is the Apple TV, that, that second version, that was bad. It was really bad. But they had an app on there from the NFL, the National Football League, the, the sexy world football, the Dwayne Johnson's football. They had an app up there, and it was awesome. It was so, so great. It was incredible. If, if it Just like the WWE Network, they had so much stuff up there, and if you were a hardcore fan – or if you were a historian, it was, like, essential. That NFL app had, like, team yearbooks up there that were done in the 50s. Like, they, they, the NFL films as we know it didn't start till like, 1962 is when the Sable started recording. But they had stuff up there from before that that were produced locally that they were, were up there. And to see that stuff and that type of quality was so cool. And they had everything that NFL films had, had almost ever produced, like, the football follies and all of this stuff that was a big part of your fandom if you grew up in the 70s or you know basically into the early 2000s and how the NFL sold and packaged football through the literal lens of NFL films was was everything it's why the Cowboys are America's team it's why Green Bay plays on a frozen tundra and they talk about that, and I love that stuff, and it helped to galvanize my fandom, and to see it again, it was awesome. But one day, without warning, poof, just gone. Gone. And they replaced it with a more modern version, which concentrated almost exclusively on the now. You know, the, the, the two-minute video bites, just in-season highlights, stats, and I, I, I don't know why they decided to do it. And why they decided to 86 that one, but they did. And it's like, you know, unless you have one of those old NFL crunch course VHS tapes that you got with a free subscription to Sports Illustrated and 
probably the only one that's old enough to remember any of this in the chat right now is Tim in Miami. But like, you know, you could either call up Sports Illustrated, you, you order, you get a shoe phone, maybe if that's what you wanted. But no, NFL Films Crunch Course, that, that was the one for me. They were giving away an NFL Films video. That's when it was time to re-up the subscription. And that one was awesome. Because it obviously had all these great big hits and big moments from over the years, but it also had guys like Dick Butkus and Howie Long and Deacon Jones and these other charismatic and colorful personalities cutting promos that were awesome. That were just awesome. And how awesome it was when a guy was coming across the line that you absolutely smashed them. And as somebody that played you know football, uh, that's true. You just absolutely love those hits. That's one of the reasons you, you love the game is the physical contact of it. And, you know, for those of you complaining about censorship of the WWE, the NFL did it too. That Crunch Course VHS tape that was so iconic got banished a long time ago. And in fact, all of the glorifying of violence in the game started to become shoved into the attic when CTE cases and high-profile suicides and high-profile domestics started to come into light. And, of course, there were lawsuits as well, too. ESPN used to have a deal for their Monday night show called Jacked Up that would just show guys wide receivers coming across the middle, quarterback leads them out too far, guy extends, gets just smashed by the strong safety coming across or the linebacker, and the guys would yell out, jacked up, ball would go one way, helmet would go the other way, and they don't do that anymore. They were quick to quash that one. Why? Because that's not where they wanted to perceive today's standards when selling the product. And... That's the second thing I want to bitch about, <laughs> because that's exactly what WWE told the New York Times in the article posted on Sunday. Quote, Peacock and WWE are reviewing all past content to ensure it fits our 20 and 21 standards. And that's that, because for all of its flaws and omissions, you're never going to have that version of the WWE Network ever again. Even if it's in name form on Peacock, it's gone. And where do you stop? Because some of the controversial stuff is easy on the surface. And will it take time? It's going to take a ton of time. And is it worth anybody's time to sift through it all? You know, if you look at the stuff with just like Baby Doll, kissed uh, against her will by Magnum, uh, as David Crockett says she likes it, she got smacked by Tully, she got hit with the butt of a racket by Jim Cornette, put into slavery by Dusty Rhodes because of match stipulations, you know, where she could only escape because she stole his horse Floyd and made him sway back. You think you're gonna, they're going to parse all that out over, what, 165 weeks that they had up there of World Championship Wrestling between 1985 and 88? Hell no. No way. Forget about Katie Vick or DX and Blackface parroting the nation. What about, like, The Godfather or Val Venus or Viscera with Viagra or Mae Young or New Jack or Bobby Heenan talking about Tito Santana or... Uh, Butch Reed talking about the Junkyard Dog or anything in ECW, you know? And the hilarious part of all of this is forget about the theater that's on the screen. Like, what about real life? Hulk Hogan admitted to being a real-life racist. He apparently really wanted to make sure his best friend's wife, who he was having sex with, like, really knew it, too. Because he uttered it a ton of times. That guy, that guy, the co-host of WrestleMania this year on the Peacock version of the WWE Network. So they'll edit out a racist promo in the course of fiction that he may have cut on Tony Atlas in 1979, but his shoot ones, eh. Because, as we know, Edge doesn't draw ratings, but Hulk Hogan comes back. They, they, they still draw a little bit. So this is the legislation of taste. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.